Howdy folks, Boone here. Today I'm gonna to show you a really easy way to create a crash zoom. Now this is the low budget method. You can do it all by yourself. You don't need a DP, an AC, a focus puller. You don't have to worry about having a parfocal lens or even a crazy zoom lens. All you really need is a tripod, a camera, any lens you want, and Adobe After Effects. Let's take a closer look. In this particular example, I'm doing some basic product shots of a camera here, and I wanna add some movement. More specifically, I wanna have a transition into this G2 logo on the side of the camera here, and I want something with a little more action than just a standard cut from the wide shot into this close up. Now, as I said, this is the low budget method, so I don't have a gimbal or a slider, all I have is my tripod. Now, I can try this technique in camera, but I don't have any really good zoom lenses that have the focal length to zoom all the way into the logo from the wide shot. And even if I did have a lens like that, I need to make sure it's a par focal lens so it would stay in focus as I do the zoom. So it's just a lot of obstacles, and that's why this technique is so great. The first step is as simple as capturing these two shots, both the wide shot and the close up. And again, these are static shots. I'm not going to be doing any zooming whatsoever while I'm recording. In this example, I shot my wide shot at 35 millimeter, and then I physically moved the camera closer, capturing the close up at the same focal length. All right, I'm here inside of Adobe After Effects, and I brought both the shots in. I have the wide shot as well as my close up here. Now I need to line these both up. So for this, I'm going to grab that close up shot, bring it on top of my wide shot here. And now I just need to scale it down and position it. So I'm gonna grab the side here, begin to scale it down. And one thing that'll really help me out is if I lower the opacity. So I'm gonna hit the T key, bring the opacity down to 50%. And since I'm gonna be zooming in on that G2 logo, I'm gonna roughly line it up there. Because these aren't gonna align perfectly. You know, I shot them at different angles, so they're gonna be a little off. But if I can just kind of loosely get this in place here, I'm gonna bring up scale and position here and let's bring it down to like 20% scale. Okay, and now I'll bring the opacity back up and I'll bring the close up back underneath the wide shot and here's what we got going on. Here's the wide shot, here's the close up. So to keep this animation as simple as possible, I'm gonna create a new control layer so I can do the majority of the keyframing on just one layer. For that, I'm gonna right click on the timeline, go to new null object and then I'm gonna rename this Crash Zoom. Now I'm just gonna quickly position this, have that anchor point right there. And now to have this control both layers, I'm gonna grab both the wide shot and the close up, and then I'm gonna pick whip those to the Crash Zoom null object layer. And now watch what happens when we grab the scale and the position of our null object. If I scale this up, you can see the wide shot is scaling as well. And here's the close up. Let's say I wanna start this animation at the three second mark. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna add keyframes per position and scale. And then I'm gonna go over to the four second mark. And a really fast way and efficient way to do this is to turn off the visibility of the wide shot. So I could just focus on the close up. And I'm gonna grab the null object here and scale this. Again, I'm holding shift to constrain the proportions here as I scale this. And again, you can see it's scaling up around that anchor point here, which is my logo, the G2 logo. So I'm gonna scale that up and then position it. And now we have a rough first animation here. Now if I turn the opacity of the wide shot down, you can see what's going on here. Okay, so I really need to fine tune this animation and really figure out how to cover up the transition and blend these two shots together. And I'm gonna mainly do this using motion blur and controlling the amount of motion blur. But these harsh edges that you see of my close-up shot, that's gonna be really hard to cover up with just motion blur. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here, isolate this close-up shot. I'm gonna go to Window, select Effects and Presets, and then I'm gonna search for Motion Tile. And I'm gonna drop that on our close-up shot here. And then I'm gonna use the output width and height to really cover up all of that black space here. I'm gonna to go to the first keyframe here of our animation and make sure that I've got all of the screen covered up. And I'll switch this to mirror edges. Okay, so that's covering up our entire frame. I'm gonna turn the wide shot back on and then I'm gonna to go to our animation here. And what I'm gonna do is add some easy ease. And then I'm gonna open up our graph editor here, and I really wanna jump up the speed here, and that's gonna help that motion blur really streak and blend everything together. So I'm gonna do that by dragging these here, and I'm gonna have it kind of really kick in the middle. You can see it's ramping up here on our speed graph. 
And as it's doing that, I'm gonna have our wide shot transition out, basically do an opacity animation out. So I'm gonna bring my playhead right around to where this is at its peak. I'm gonna to go to the wide shot and I'm gonna add a keyframe for opacity. And then I'm just gonna go one or two frames and then turn this down to zero. This is the key point where it's gonna to transition to our close up. Now let's stop and take a look at what we've got right now. Okay, wow. That is actually looking good already. It's quite seamless. I didn't expect it to be this good uh, without the, using the motion blur, actually. So if I go back into After Effects and I go frame by frame here, that's where you can really see it uh, begin to fall apart. So here on this particular frame, it's not looking too good. You can see some of the motion tile effect here. So if this gets really bad, one way you can help blend this in is to use motion blur. So right down here, I can click on Enable Motion Blur for all layers with the motion blur switch set. And then I can just use uh, the motion blur switches here. If you can't see these switches, you can toggle between switches and modes here. And I'm gonna go ahead and enable the motion blur for both the wide shot and the close up. And this could be a little render intensive, so just be ready to wait around for a little bit. All right, so now you can see this is helping the edges blend in a bit better, blurring things out a bit. You can't really see what's going on, and it just gives it overall a better look. It really makes it look more like if this was done in camera. And actually, if I wanna increase this motion blur and uh, you know blur things out a little bit more and hide that transition, I can go to Composition, Composition Settings, and then under the Advanced tab, there's Shutter Angle right down here. There's a whole motion blur section, actually, but I can essentially just raise the shutter angle number, and that's gonna increase that blur amount. Okay, it's looking a lot better with that motion blur, but it's still looking quite digital and fake. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna add some camera shake to this. Now I could just slap on a wiggle expression, but my buddy Todd over here has actually created 15 free camera shake presets for Adobe After Effects. So these are really almost as simple as drag and drop. And what's cool about these is not only are they free, but some of these have their own crash zooms built in. So if you have a, if you shot something at a high enough resolution, you can simply drop this on one shot and it's gonna give you that zoom effect. And there's different presets for different focal lengths and they're available in 4K. So I urge you to go follow the link in the video description to find these, download them. So to use these, I'm gonna grab all of my elements here, right click and pre-compose. And I'll call this crash zoom pre-comp. And now I'm gonna add a new null object. And I'll call this camera shake. And I've already installed these, so I'm gonna go up to effects and presets, animation presets, user presets. And I'm gonna grab the 35 millimeter light movement 4K. And it's important where your playhead is because it's gonna paste keyframes starting at the playhead. So I'm gonna move this to the beginning here. And then I'm gonna drag and drop it over that null object. And you can see there's some keyframes that have been added here. Um, if I hit the U key, you can see them all here. Now it's as simple as parenting my pre-comp to my camera shake null object. And now you can see some camera shake here, but there's a problem and it's the fact that we're losing the edges here. So to fix that, I'm just gonna scale this up a little bit. And there, not only have I faked the crash zoom, but now I'm faking that I did it handheld. And nobody will know that I'm a liar. Okay, so there you have it. So there's how you can put together a crash zoom using two static shots and Adobe After Effects. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Again, be sure to go follow that link, check out those free animation presets for those camera shakes. And as always, if you like the tutorial, hit the thumbs up button. If you wanna see more cool content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell.